Okay guys, so today we're going to be talking about weathering tyres. Um, these guys here that I've got in front of me have already been weathered obviously, and just forgive my fingers, I've been playing with, with uh, parcels and chalks and all sorts of things, so my, my fingers are a little bit grubby. But these are just some of the different effects we're going to be looking at getting. Um, the best way to decide what sort of effect you're after is look at photos, reference photos of you know, the vehicles that you're, you're trying to make and, and work out what the best effect is. So uh, the, the effects we're going to go for today is this guy here on the end is like driving in some muddy conditions but there's a bit of a bit of dried mud already in there where that's dried out and the stuff on the outside is still wet. Like they're going through, so, you know, it's been raining um, on and off and they're driving through wet terrain but the tyre's not all muddy. The next one here is just like desert driving with no bitumen or anything just in the in the dust so it gets all dusty like that. Uh, don't take any notice of um, how rough these tyres are guys, these are just old ones off a really old model that have been, been around. So, And these last two here are different variations of pretty much the same thing, it's you know a, a vehicle that's been driven off-road and on-road this guy here is probably a little bit more off-road at the moment, like he's been driving around, uh, you know, like out in the desert for a little bit and he's back on the bitumen again now. Now this guy here probably spent more time on the bitumen. There's a little bit of dust in his treads and things like that, but he spent more time on the bitumen. Now obviously I'm not going to worry too much about road tyres, like just straight road tyres. Um, if you want to do that effect, you can do something fairly similar to this guy here, which he is, um, like he's, he's got a little bit of dust in him and you can go as light or heavy as you want so if you want to make it even lighter than that which I probably would you can just put down a really light layer of what we're going to do with this with the pastels and stuff like that but um, yeah guys I'll get a new set of tyres out and I'll go through and I'll show you how to get all the, each of these different effects uh, what I'll do just quickly I'll hold this one up because maybe where it is you can't actually get a good idea of just um, the effect that's on that with the wet on the outside dry on the inside sort of thing but, yeah, a bit of a different effect. So anyway, guys, I'll, um, I'll see you when I get the other tyres ready to go, and we'll go through these techniques. Okay, guys, so we're back. Uh, just forgive if you hear any background noises. I'm down in my shed at the moment, and there's a lot of wind, so you may hear the whole shed creaking in the background. The first technique we're going to do is just working with our, um, with our weathering powders. These guys here, I've just got the uh, MIG powders. Get those into shot for you there a little bit so you can see what I'm using. I'm just using three different colours here, guys. Now, the reason for using three different colours is if you just use one colour, it just looks too monotone, it doesn't look realistic. It just, you can just see that one colour, even though if, if you're driving around the desert, normally it's pretty much the same coloured sand, but because some of it's faded, some of it's a bit thicker, you, you do get different tones in it. So, I'm using three different pastels here, as you can see three different weathering, weathering powders that are all a little bit different. A couple of them have got a little bit of a red tinge, one's got more of the desert yellow tinge to it. But um, all we're going to be doing is just dabbing our powder on just randomly at first and just go around. It doesn't have to be heavy, just in little patches. Okay, get it right down into next to the rim there as well. Because just remember too guys, the rim is going to be dusty as well. Okay, but the tyre is the part that normally the dust sticks to, so I've used that one, I'll push him back, this one here, and all you're doing is just, just in a couple of spots, don't put it all over the back over the top of the one you just put down, because what'll happen, you'll make it that colour instead of mixing the colours together, okay, just sort of dab it around, okay, that's enough of that one, and now I'll go with the next colour, and again, I'm just putting this in certain places, not all over the whole tyre, now, the way you can work this too, guys, is if you want it to be a lighter colour, you start with the darker colours and work to the lighter. If you want it to be opposite, you do the opposite way around. So I've gone from the lighter colour, work my way up to the darker colours. Okay, so I'm just going to dab that in now, make sure it's all sitting in there, like so. Now, the thing with weathering powders, guys, if you can use pastels for this as well, pastels work just as well um, but powders are just convenient because they're already in the bottle, they're already mixed up and um, you know you, you've got such a huge choice of colours these days, everyone's making their own pastels or their own powders these days 
So that's that's pretty much all you've got to do, guys. Now, that is a little bit rough at the moment, as in it's it's a bit grainy looking. It looks a bit too thick. So all you do is just get a, another brush, something that's got a fairly, fairly good end on it like that, like a little bit fluffy, and just wipe over it just to clean off the excess of that dust. Okay. Now, normally you would do up around the tread here as well. Now around the tread it's just brushing it on like that because it's just going to be dirty from running in the in the dirt the way it has or in the dust. And the top, by doing the top like this too, it, it puts more down into the grooves. Okay. Now if I had bare fingers, if I didn't have these gloves on, what I'd do is just rub over it like that, although the gloves are working okay anyway. So you just, all you're going to do is rub over like that and that's just going to clean off a bit of that weathering powder and leave the stuff down in the grooves. Now that's pretty much it guys that's just using powders alone. Now you can put on uh, more powder if you want you can use white spirit or whatever to lay the powder down to make it stick a little bit better um, there's a few different things you can do with that but just experiment with it until you get it right okay that's just one coat that's just one little bit of a weathering I can go over and put that on again now. I could put uh, a bit of thinners on there, uh, you know, white spirit or whatever, and put more on there after that. Um, and also, you can put like a put a dust coat of, say, um, flat coat um, testers or something like that over it to hold that dust there. Because when you handle your models, if you just got pastel powders, I'll quickly show you here what happens. If you pick it up and touch the tire, there you go. You lose half of it. Okay. Which again, that's another technique you can use anyway, guys. You can have that sort of effect if you want. Now that's more of a tyre that has been run off-road and on-road. So the side walls are clean. You can go around clean the, the knobs off up the top here a little bit as well. So you end up with just the dust in the grooves and you get that sort of look. But again, guys, look at your reference photos. Work out what sort of tire you want but that one there is just pastels and uh, with weathering powder pastels whatever you want to use they, they do pretty much the same thing okay so that's that look there and what I'll do now I'll go off camera I'll get the next one ready and I'll show you another technique again okay guys so we're back again and this time around we're going to show you you'll probably probably end up with fairly close to the the result we got before like when I rubbed off the excess and you had a bit of a shiny sidewall and the dust in the grooves but this one here is a little bit different it's achieved a little bit differently um, I'm going to use this uh, AK interactive stuff here uh, this is like streaking effects and stuff like that you can get but now all this pr pretty much all this is is just your weathering powders mixed in with thinner with uh, white spirit or whatever so you can make it up out of pastel powders you can make it up out of your weathering powders like these guys mix in with a bit of thinners and all you're going to do is make up a sludge wash uh, a sludge wash okay so i've just shaken this bottle up a little bit and all i'm going to do is just put this sludge wash on here and put on a fairly good coat of it guys because you want it to all settle down into the grooves now it doesn't matter if you get some down the rim that's that's probably a good thing because the rim, remember as well, is going to have the dust on it. Okay. And just go make sure you get all the way right around the whole tire. Like that, make sure there's plenty down in the in the sides. Now I'm only going to do like one side of these guys. I'm not going to do the whole tire just because it's going to take too long on the videos, and you guys are probably going to get sick of watching it. So that's that's all I'm doing there now. Okay, I'm going to go around again because most of that's run out because I've held it up. Okay, and that's pretty much it. Got that, that's it. So I'm just going to let that sit and dry. When it dries, we'll come back and we'll do the second part of this technique. Now, the other thing is with this, if you want to do some weathering in the middle, put some dust in the middle, just dry brush this stuff on, like so. And all that'll do, that'll just dry into a nice dusty sort of coat and you'll see when that's dried out you'll see that it's just put a nice layer of dust onto that rim in the middle there if you don't do that you're going to have a, a shiny clean rim and a dirty dusty tire and it's just not going to sit well so i'm going to let that dry now guys we'll come back and we'll show you the second part of this technique 
Okay guys, we're back with the tyre that we've done the, the sludge wash on. You can see that there now, and that's actually dried out. So what we do now is we can actually rub that sludge wash with our fingers, and now I'd like to rub it back towards the outside. I don't like to rub it around in circles too much. Just rub it back towards the outside, like so. Now this technique, you can keep going until you get the look you're after, how much dust you want left on that tyre. Okay, so you can stop there or you can go like even further and rub even more off. And it's the same with the treader on the outside here. Just rub it back. Now if I had bare fingers this would actually work a little bit better. Um, but this gives you an idea of, of the sort of look you end up with. Okay, so you've got dust, that nice dust look inside that, that tread pattern. And it's cleaned the walls off a little bit. So now to get it to look even more like it's actually been run on, on tarmac for a while. What I'm going to do is off to the side here, get a little paint palette. I'm just going to put a little bit of black oil paint on there like so. Okay, and we're actually going to do a little bit of dry brushing. Which, now dry brushing is going to really depend on your brush that you use as to what sort of effects you're going to get as well, okay. So this one here is a bit of a flat brush, but it's a pretty old, rubbishy one that like, the bristles all had it and all that sort of thing. Now we all know with dry brushing, put it in your oil, get the excess off on your tissue. Now I'm going to actually put more on there because I really want to load this brush right up, so because otherwise you just keep soaking back into the brush. So make sure the brush is well loaded, then rub it off on your tissue so there's barely anything coming off there. Okay. Now we'll do it on the outside here, just to test it, make sure that I've got it to the consistency I want. Okay, so you can see as I rub over that, what's happening. Okay, and it's actually blackening the top parts of that tread, but leaving that beautiful dust look on the inside. Now just forgive the roughness of this tyre guys, like I say, it's off a really old model that I wanted to chew up the tyre, and so I haven't actually cleaned the tyres up too much. Okay, so that's all dry brushing is, okay? Just keep brushing over it till you get it to the effect you want. Now you'll find because this is on rubber, this is coming up nice and dry and it really looks like rubber. Which brings me to, if you're working with plastic tires that you've painted up, don't paint them in, in just pure black, okay? Use NATO black or, uh, I've got Vallejo paints there which are a German grey which are really, really dark. It's, it's close to a, a black grey sort of colour, and I, I paint in those colours. Never use black, it's just way too stark. If you do use black, if that's all you've got, don't panic, you, you can get away with it because once you weather this, you can dull it down. It just takes a bit more weathering to get rid of that black look. Okay, guys, so we've done the tread on the outside, so what we're going to do now is I'll put some more oils into this brush. Okay, again, I'll get it nice and loaded, and I'll get my tissue on the side here brush off the excess and I'm going to go around on the inside here now this is dry brushing room so don't press hard just nice and light okay nice and light so you can see what's happening there now hopefully I'll keep it up towards the camera so you can see it a little bit better you can see where those lugs are starting to really darken up and bits of the side wall are starting to darken up but it's leaving that beautiful dust inside that tread pattern and inside that side wall and down near the rim there. Okay, now this again is a technique that you can do as much or as little as you want. Now, if I had a not taken, if, if I had taken a lot more off my brush and started doing that, I could have left this tire much dustier than what it is now. Okay, but I wanted to, you to be able to see the effect, so I've left quite a bit of that oil paint on there just so we can see that effect okay and how it works and i'll get this up to the camera for you a little bit and you can see that there okay absolutely beautiful and that's that's the sort of look you're after for something that's been run in the desert but now it's running on tarmac okay it leaves it fairly shiny on the side walls and lugs and things like that but the dust stays in all the grooves okay and like i say play with these effects guys keep going until you get the, the look you're after. If you mess this up, just put another sludge wash over it and start again. It's, it's, it's not a problem, it's not hard to do. Okay, so what I'll do, 
We'll go back to another one now that I've, I've prepared with another sludge wash. Um, but the sludge wash I've done on this other one, I've done just with pastels, okay? I've just ground up pastels and I've actually also got a little bit of pigments, which is pretty much the same thing, but just pigments are a bit finer. And I'll show you another technique again on those, okay? Okay, guys, so we're back and we're going to go into our next technique now. Now, this one is for our muddy tyre, one that's been running in mud and maybe some of the stuff on the inside has dried out because it's it's been running out in fresh air so the the mud in the middle of the rim and stuff has dried out but the stuff on the outside is still moist because the ground is still moist that it's running on so all i've done is off to the side here i'm going to have this tray and all i've done here is i've got is just some pastel powders in this cup here and this cup here just a couple of different colors and all i'm going to do is use thinners okay to thin those out so all I do is with our white spirit I'll pull this back into view for you I'm just going to brush in some white spirit into that cup there okay and mix it around that gives us that nice little muddy look there okay and I'll clean my brush off a little bit like so and then I'll do the same in the next cup with the other color in it okay so you've got the two nice contrasting colors there now hopefully you can pick that up on the video, you've got two contrasting colours there. And next what I'm going to do is turn my airbrush on, so just forgive the noise in the background guys. So now to do this technique, this has got to be fairly wet this stuff, so just keep adding to it so it doesn't dry out because this thinners or I'm using shellite which is like a white spirit, will actually dry out fairly quick in the air. So make sure you keep it thin, thin enough so you can put it on your brush like so. Okay. And all I'm going to do is, I've got my airbrush off to the side here. Now, you just blow with your airbrush, just blow on it like that. Now see that splatter pattern? We're going to do that onto our tyre. Okay. Now normally I've got some blue tack here to hold this down, but um, I haven't actually got it on me at the moment. My girls have taken it, so... Just forgive me if I hold this down with one finger and spray it with the other. Actually, I might have some blue tack off to the side, so I'll just quickly put that down so it holds that tire for us. So I'm not chasing it all over the table. Okay, so this is dried out a little bit, so I'm just going to put a bit more thinners with it. Dab the brush in, get an airbrush, and just like that. Just splatter effects. Make sure you get the rim as well. Turn your tire around a little bit so it's not all in one side. Okay, you can blow the excess off out to the side there, like so. That's our first colour, and the second colour here is dried out a little bit, so I'm going to put some more thinners in there. Okay, so it's nice and thin, and I'm going to quickly just test it off to the side here. Okay, you can see how much comes out of there. You don't want that much going onto your tire, so. Just thin it out first. Now you have your airbrush fairly high for this, guys, so that it does actually blow the mud out. And a bit more up the top here, like so. Now this is good with having the different coloured powders because if you had just the one coloured powder in here, guys, it's just not going to look right. Like we were saying before. Having that contrast is what makes all the difference. And just forgive me the back of my hand there. So, okay, so that that's pretty much going to do it, guys. I'll just keep this airbrush over there for a little bit just to dry that out for us. Okay, so I can make sure I've definitely got everything I want. Okay, there's a little bit more there I might do. I'll just go back to the original colour with it and do a little bit up here in the top. So. Okay, now that'll do us guys, that's made a big enough mess of it, I'll just move this off to the side and blow some air over this. Okay, so that's that part of it done, and we can actually keep going with this technique, I'll use the same brush, I'll just quickly clean it off to the side here. Now, all I'm doing this time guys, is I've got those same weathering powders over here, okay, and I've just got a little bit of Johnson's Clear, which is like Future, up in this cup here. And all I'm going to do is mix it in with this stuff, okay? So what will happen is, it won't, it won't dry as in a dry dirt look. It'll actually dry 
with a wet look okay um, so while I've got that like that all I do is around the outside here put a coat of around there like so so what's going to happen when we go through this technique when we get more on there when you see what happens it's going to have that nice muddy looking effect on the outside of the tyre here okay start mixing that in a little bit now as you can see it's fairly thick and gluggy because of the future that's in there okay I might actually make up a whole nother batch over to the side here just with the future okay because it's it's sort of not liking working with those thinners but um, yeah so this, this is all we've got to do I've just mixed up that bit onto the side go around the edges like so it doesn't have to be neat guys because remember this is like mud it's not it doesn't go onto a tire neat now just so, make sure you remember too to go around the top of your tread up around here and as that as that dries out a little bit you can actually rub back on that and that'll give you a nice look as well to have that tread on the outside where that up so that's that one color and what I might do is I'll throw in a little bit of the other color we got here with a little bit of the future and we'll just go around and just dab around spots like that now what that does it just sort of mixes up the two colors together so it matches the stuff that's on that side wall which is in two colors okay so when that dries I'll turn the camera back on so you can have a good look at that and just see what that looks like um, it's it's a very very good technique guys um, looks a bit messy at the moment but when I put it on a proper background and you see the way it dries it's a very very nice look the other thing you can do is dip your brush back in the future and the wet stuff and just really light sprays of it on there now you don't have to use an airbrush you can use a toothbrush and dip it in that and just flick it with the toothbrush the toothbrush though just be aware it will spray thicker patterns on there and, and so just spray a few off to the side and then spray it onto the tire and it'll be a little bit lighter but you know just get some old tires guys play around with these techniques and um, just get the feel for them and how they all work but I'll let that dry we'll come back and I'll show you what it looks like okay guys so we're back <coughs> and our tire is now dry so believe it or not yes it is dry it still looks wet on the outside but that's what we're going for like I say if you splatter a bit of that wet look on the inside as well it gives a bit better effect because it looks like wet stuff sprayed on the inside but that gives you the idea of something that's driving on greasy ground it, you know it's it's damp but it's not you know really muddy sort of thing um, you can run around and rub over the the tread on the outside if you like if you'd rather that look and just rub a bit of that off but um, you know that's that's just so you know that's the look you're after like I say look at your reference photos check out what sort of terrain you want your vehicle to be in obviously if you want it to be in just pure mud you would do that same effect we've done on the outside here uh, but do it over the whole thing and you can like mix different pastels and different weathering powders and stuff like that and um, mix it with resin or whatever just to cake it up so it looks like it's really really caked up if you want it in a bog you can fill in all that tread pattern around the outside there so it looks like it's actually clogged up all the tread pattern um, but you know guys all these techniques are things that you can play with look at reference photos play with an old get an old tire muck around with it play with it get it to the technique like you know muck around the techniques till you get the precise look that you are after but that's just giving you an idea of how you can play with these different things and you know like the, the different looks that come out of it so that's that guy there and I'll turn the camera off now and we'll go back to one of the ones we've done earlier um, with the, the the wet wash and I'll show you a few different techniques to do those up okay guys so we're back again and this tire here has been done just with with pigments and just with some pastels ground up okay now all I've done is made a sludge wash and I made the sludge wash just out of water okay it's not done out of thinners or anything like that. it's just water with pastel powder and with our MIG pigments now I've mixed in a couple of different colors I didn't want this to be too uniform and it may be hard to pick up on the camera but there is actually two colors of wash on that it's not just the one color um, just gives you a little bit of variation now once it's dried because it was done with water you'll see I'm only just barely touching that and that's that is coming off okay I'm just 
hardly even touching just a nice light brush now I'm using that flat one there I should use let's get it out here something a little bit more bristled like that and you can get an even lighter effect if you want that so you just rub it nice and light so you get a nice light effect okay it, it's just again guys it just play around with this until you get the technique you're after you can use finer brushes you can use heavier brushes it just it, it's just really going to depend on the look you're after now if I want to use a, a fairly stiff brush like this guy here I can really rub back on it okay like so and that's going to give us that look that we had on that other tire uh, this guy here where we use dry brushing it'll it'll have the same sort of look okay this is just a bit easier but the thing is if you use this technique to get this look make sure that you put an overcoat over this because if you don't those pastels every time you pick it up they're going to fall out of there because they're not actually hung on with anything like thinners or anything they're just put on there with water so um, I'll get another brush again now like a fairly light one if I can find it over here that one there okay and what we'll do we'll just give this a really just a light puff like so okay now hopefully the camera's picking that up I'll hold up a bit closer for you you actually got getting my focus in there for you if you can see those brush marks that that are in there because of that brush and the way I used it on there that's another look at another effect again that you can get okay again guys like I say get yourself some old tires play around with it until you get the effect you're after okay so we'll just keep going with this thick brush now and then I'll show you that I'll just go over and just brush the whole thing off okay now I, I quite like this look because it's 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 really really light okay it's just and and again guys just get it to the point that you want it at okay so now that that's probably somewhere where I'd like it um, there's a model I'm doing at the moment where it's done a bit of mud work but now it's on the bitumen but there's still mud that's dried on there okay and it's but it's been on the bitumen for quite a while so a lot of the mud's broken off but it has left a bit on there okay and the same thing again just go around the outside here guys just brush this outside part off like that so you can get back down to the tread like so okay and that gives you that look there so hopefully guys between doing all those that should give you a bit of an idea how to do a bit of weathering on tyres and like I say make sure you get some old ones muck around with it get some reference photos try and match up the looks and things like that um, the one I haven't shown you is the mud but obviously it's the same effect as we got on this guy in the end here just use something like a future or something that's going to leave that wet look with whatever you know powders or whatever you're going to use with it um, but the other thing is too guys just remember to mix your powders don't have just one color um, you can get these same effects too by dry brushing or you can also use your airbrush to brush the powder on with your airbrush to give it a nice dusty look um, but with an airbrush remember you're just spraying one color so if you're going to do that um, just make sure you use you know get a bit of thinners or something on a brush dip your brush in the thinners wipe it off so you've got hardly anything left and it's like dry brushing then except the opposite and just drag the brush over and what it'll do is take bits of that paint off so okay guys uh, the other thing I just want to let you know I'll just give you a few tips um, with working with these tires one of them that I've already mentioned um, is not using pure black Try and use NATO black or dark German greys, things like that. Uh, there's also, to me, it does a rubber colour as well you can use. Okay, another thing is the rubber versus plastic. Today we'll be just mucking around with rubber tyres, but if you use the plastic ones, it's exactly the same techniques, okay? It doesn't change. Um, I like working with rubber tyres, it's just me. The only hard thing with rubber tyres is, like all tyres, you'll end up with a seam down the middle here that you have to get rid of. If you file it off or if you sand it off, you'll end up with feathered lugs. Now, how I get rid of those, I just use a lighter and just light the lighter up and just hold it to the edge of the tire quickly and it just burns those little, those singes, those ends off, okay? Um, you can also use sandpaper, like with effects like this, where you can just get some light sandpaper and just rub it over there and it'll, it'll you know, take off the dust and go back down to the rubber to get that sort of look instead of dry brushing if you want to try that technique. 
um, splattering your mud like I was saying before you don't have to use an airbrush you can use it with a toothbrush or just a stiff um, paintbrush or whatever but um, just practice on paper till you get it you know spraying off the, the pattern that you're after because you, you can destroy that look fairly quick if you put it on too heavy in one big hit it just absolutely wrecks that look um, with getting the sludge wash you can use which I tend to use a little bit these days is things like this is AK products like this which is actually like a um, a streaking effect that you use okay I'll use that or I'll use uh, MIG pigments or whatever pigments I've got on hand and I'll mix those up with water or you know um, white spirit or whatever sort of um, stuff or, or, or it depends on what sort of look I'm after if I'll use white spirit if I want the pigment to hang on there a bit better but I still do use pastel powders as well because I can mix my own colors I've got a whole set of pastel um, chalk pastel um, sticks that I can grind down and make my own colours uh, to get what I want. Uh, the other thing you can do with these guys too is to get your dust on you. You can dry brush the whole thing with like a say a dusty colour if you want to do it that way. But all these techniques guys they're all they're all variable. You can mix them with each other, mix, mix and match and things like that. Get reference photos, play around with it until you get the look you're after. Now if you have any questions please leave them below. Um, and make sure if you haven't subbed, please sub to me guys because uh, I'm going to keep these videos coming for a while now and hopefully this is going to help you guys with doing your models. Okay, thanks for watching guys and I will see you in the next video.